At the National Railway Museum in York, workers are recreating a British ambulance train. Still in the early stages, they're converting a 1907 passenger car into an ambulance carriage. The practice of turning commuter trains into ambulance trains took place in locomotive works across Great Britain during the First World War. The museum in York has an extensive archive of photographs and designs that capture life on board these hospitals on wheels. The British were prepared for war. The London and North Western Railway had designs put in place as early as 1911 that we were able to just use straight away when um, war broke out to start building trains very, very quickly. Ambulance trains were huge. They were up to a third of a mile long. That's 16 carriages in some of the longer trains. And even then, there could be more carriages attached to that. About half of the train would be made up of wards for the patients, but then the other half would be for the staff and the stores. And it's important to understand that people actually lived on ambulance trains. They didn't get off and leave. There was great attention to detail in the fixtures and fittings, even down to the ashtrays on every bunk. The 16 carriage trains had to feed hundreds of men. There's two kitchen cars on this particular train. Um, that had all the facilities to cater for up to 500 men. And there were chefs that lived on the train next to the kitchen. We also find a separate compartment for infectious cases so that the men were quarantined for the rest of the car. So you'd get men with flu, perhaps venereal disease in this carriage. At the end of the First World War, ambulance trains continue to play a variety of roles. But many carriages were reconverted to commuter cars.